Hello, Martin. How are you? I'm good. It's ice How are you? Ice, How... Cream, ice cream and coffee, Monday again. You took the words out right out of my mouth. And uh, I've been thinking, is there a barbecue scheduled somewhere down the road? Well, we started with coffee. Now it's ice cream. Uh, well, yes, yes, I think yes, there will be a barbecue. And actually, I plan to discuss high temperature applications over barbecue. Is that okay? Deal. Now I have some more questions for you. Tell me. By removing time-based grease replenishment, how does that work in regard to the interval? Well, that, that's what sometimes confuses people in transition from time-based to condition-based lubrication. I, I agree, it's, it's an excellent question. Because for me, intervals are good. They introduce order in chaos. They keep the workload leveled as such. Um, you know, obviously condition-based kind of uh, brings a little bit of chaos sometimes. Yes, <laughs> yes, it does. But uh, of course, chaos is not good at all, of course. And, and uh, But training helps removing this confusion, of course. The magic word, training. I like that, good. Now, let's remove this confusion from our ice cream session. Yeah, I saw it coming. <laughs> in time-based time lubrication, interval is absolutely needed, and it means regreasing. In condition-based based lubrication, there is also an interval, but it just means something else. It means data collection, measurement. So uh, there is an interval, it's just a conceptual difference. Condition-based lubrication is not much different than condition-based maintenance in its essence. Action is triggered by condition, not by time. So that's the difference. So we're not, we're not looking for an action interval, we're looking for a condition assessment interval or an inspection interval rather, that is routine, that may trigger action. Well, that's that, that's great. This, this is how you put it in very simple words, what I'm trying to say in a very long text, and thank you for that. So yes, it's data <laughs> collection interval. Condition uh, concluded based on data will tell us if we need to regrease or not, and how much. So data will be processed, and it will tell you if regreasing is needed. If it's not needed, fine. You did your job. You collected data, which is actually essential job. Don't touch the grease gun and go away. If it's needed, just turn on your machine and do the job. So, no possibility for mistakes then? Well, there are always possibilities of mistakes and that, that's why we do the training part. <laughs> Great. So, step one in removing the confusion is done. Huh? Uh, let me rephrase my question now. What is the data collection interval? How would we set that up? What is it? Uh, that's an excellent question. So uh, correct data collection interval is determined actually the same way we determine data collection interval in condition monitoring. So put it this way. If anomaly or defect shows its first detectable symptoms six months before functional failure or any irreversible damage, what would be a logical interval? So surely not greater than three months if we want to do a good job. So we chose interval that will give us certain advantage over the problem progressing or development. So it, it all boils down to understanding failure modes as always. It's, it's, it's always the same answer. So if we understand failure modes and if we, of course, with more or less precision, understand how anomaly progresses, we are able to set up the proper data collection interval. So that's where the interval should be coming from. Um, Let's put it this way in a very simple uh, everyday situation. You want to replace an electrical pole in a public street before it falls down on my head, for instance, because of corrosion. So how often will you, will you inspect that pole for corrosion? Is it going to be daily? What do you think? Possibly. Okay, <laughs> if you really have no <laughs> better things to do. <laughs> But, uh, but probably probably not because there'll be cost cutting, right? Yeah. <laughs> Town councils, huh? Yeah, but it doesn't make the sense at all because it's like watching the grass grow. So uh, uh, we are we are able to to answer that because we know well that from the first sign of corrosion to pole falling down will take much more time than that, maybe years. So we yeah. adjust that interval based on that understanding. Maybe we'll check every year, every year and a half. And now even better, if we want to be proactive and remove the cause of corrosion, uh, we will also inspect and we will sandblast and repaint and do whatever we need to do. 
So this is how we come to the interval. Okay. So I'm going to guess that you would, obviously in terms of the inspection interval versus the regreasing interval, you would not even begin to want to compare them. Mm, yeah, you're right. You're right. I, would, I wouldn't compare them at all. <laughs> well, I, I would compare them in a part where they put a plan in a chaos, where they put order in chaos. There, they, they can be compared, but they come from two completely different mindsets. Calculated regreasing intervals are not really precise. They are the, 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 the best we can do based on available data. And uh, so real need can be much earlier or, or much, much uh, uh, after the recommended interval. So that's why we don't go with base, we go with inspect the condition. So uh, uh, interval in, in, in uh, time base tells you go out there and grease. What we say is go out there and check the condition. So yeah. they can be compared by the, by the work order and plan that actually somebody needs to do something but the description of the job is completely different. But then obviously you mentioned earlier the root cause issues, etc. So if we understand the root cause of the failure and we've done our failure modes and effects criticality analysis and we know how our machine might potentially fail, we're basing then our inspections on real data. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Because assets, they do have life there. Uh, it's a living organism. So it changes constantly and that, that's, that's why we want to discuss about inter interval in a completely different way, interval of collecting the data. So, but you know, data is objective. What about the emotive aspects, the feelings? Uh, feelings are good. I'm a very emotional guy, as you know that. Uh, yeah. but, <laughs> but we live in age of data and age of opinions and feelings uh, and hope are behind us. I think. Yeah, so uh, talk about my feelings. So I, I guess we ought to get another ice cream, coffee and go into the whole aspect of feelings in a deeper kind of way. I completely agree. So I'll see you on Monday on that topic. Goodbye. Yep. Thank you.